Spring is here and it's time to start planning. Want a quick afternoon project that's both fun and productive? This little indoor garden uses stuff you probably already have lying around and it's a fantastic green way to make sure you always have fresh herbs or salad greens around for cooking. And if you're the kind of person who gets nervous about keeping a thirsty plant alive, don't worry. This is about as close as you can get to a self-sufficient garden for less than 10 bucks, without getting into it too much. It's basically a closed loop between a small fish tank and a living plant. That means this project is also a perfect way to teach your kids about ecosystems. One more quick note about this project before we get started. My supplies were basically what I had lying around the house or what I picked up at a thrift store. For example, the water pump came from a $3 fountain in Goodwill. Nearly everything can be switched out with something else, so get creative. That's what makes it fun. You'll need a flower pot about six and a quarter inches tall, a coffee pot, a small water pump, aquarium tubing, a wooden box for the base, a 14 inch knitting needle, a seven inch length of half inch PVC, a two and a half inch length of half inch PVC, a half inch PVC elbow attachment, a block of wood, and a couple bits and pieces. You're also gonna need a hacksaw, a drill, some super glue, and some PVC cement. Start by taking the handle off the coffee pot by looking for a screw near the base. Unscrewing that should loosen the metal ring that goes around the pot, allowing you to slide the whole assembly off. Keep the metal ring. Now take a pair of pliers and jimmy off the end cap on the knitting needle. Once it's off, squeeze the wide end of the knitting needle flat with the pliers. We're going to use the metal ring from the coffee pot as a brace for the flower pot. Depending on the size of the flower pot, it should sit just a little bit under the rim of the pot when you slide it up from the bottom. With the flattened end up, slide the knitting needle between the flower pot and the metal brace. Tighten the screw just enough to see where it sits on the needle. Using either an electric drill or a hammer and nail, put a small hole in the knitting needle. It should be large enough for the tip of the screw to go in, but not big enough that the screw slides freely in and out. When you tighten the screw, it should press the knitting needle to the flower pot and give you a relatively secure handle for the pot. Now drill a hole in the wooden box that's large enough for the knitting needle to slide easily through. I messed up on the first one, which is why there are two holes in the picture, but you only need one. The box I'm using is one of those old file card storage things with the drawers removed. It was about a dollar at Goodwill. You can use anything similar, and something that's a bit smaller might actually look nicer. Now slide the bottom of the knitting needle into the hole and place the coffee pot underneath the flower pot, which should be held in the air by the knitting needle. This is how the main parts are going to fit together, so make sure everything's where you want it to be. The knitting needle should be pretty much straight up and down, which is going to give the flower pot a slight forward lean. That's what we want. Make sure the hole in the bottom of the flower pot is completely above the bo coffee pot. That's where water will drip down. Once everything's stabilized and looking pretty, put a mark where the knitting needle hits the inner floor of the wooden box. We need something here to keep the needle from sliding around, and an old washer will work perfectly. You can use anything for this, maybe a sliver of PVC pipe or a little scrap piece of balsa wood. Whatever you use, put a few dabs of super glue on it and press it into place around the mark where the knitting needle sits. While that dries, slide together the PVC parts. Just take the 7 inch and the 2.5 inch lengths and connect them with the elbow. There are a couple things you can do here. If you have more half inch PVC, you can measure out about 15 inches for the long arm and run that straight through the top of the wooden box. I only had a few scraps lying around from another project, so I'm using a wooden block from a tree limb to get enough height. I also like the rustic look it gives the project. Set the PVC assembly in the hole so that the elbow points over the rim of the flower pot. Attach the aquarium tubing to the water pump, set the pump in the bottom of the coffee pot, and put a mark on the PVC pipe where the tubing hits it. Drill a hole at the mark through one wall of the pipe, not all the way through. It's worth pointing out now that this assembly is essentially going to be a casing for the aquarium tubing coming out of the water pump. In other words, there won't actually be any water in the PVC pipe, so they don't need to be watertight. You can always skip this step and just run the tubing straight over the rim of the flower pot, but it looks a lot nicer this way. Slide the aquarium tubing through the hole you drilled in the PVC pipe, bringing it up through the elbow and out the other end. The easiest way to do this is to disassemble the PVC pipes and run the tubing through them one at a time, and then attach them back together again. Cut off any excess tubing coming out the top. At this point, it's a good idea to pour some water into the coffee pot and test any, everything. Add at least enough water to cover the pump and turn it on. It should send water through the tubing and into the flower pot, then back into the coffee pot from the hole at the bottom of the flower pot. Okay, we're done building everything. The only other functional change I made was to stick a piece of mesh over the hole in the flower pot. That'll keep rocks and pebbles from falling through. I went ahead and gave the PVC pipes in the flower pot a quick paint job, transforming this from a garage job into something fit for the living room. So what are we looking at? Obviously I did more than paint it. 
The coffee pot is now home to a goldfish, along with a few rocks to hold the bacteria that make all this work. The flower pot is filled about halfway with a mixture of pea gravel and marbles, and in this is a small ivy plant that I transplanted. The pea gravel and marble mixture is called the substrate, and it holds the ivy's roots in place. As the water trickles through it, the roots suck the nutrients out and clean it at the same time. The fresh water drips back into the fish tank, where the little guy will poop into it some more and fill it with the stuff plants like. It's a plant that waters itself and a fish tank that cleans itself. All you need to do is feed the fish. If you want to learn more about aquaponics, go to my channel and take a look at some of the other projects I've done.